Let's talk about what would happen if you could tell the future and not just about which coins you should buy, not whether Ripple or Bitcoin Cash will get bigger than Bitcoin, but predictive intelligence. I was reading this book, happened upon it somehow, Bitcoin and Cryptocurrency Technology. It's a textbook from Princeton. I'm about to tell you something that I think is one of the most powerful applications. I think this is a magnitude one hundred, a magnitude of order 100 times bigger than just knowing cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. I'm talking about this is 100 times bigger and I'm talking about an application for the blockchain to basically use it to end war, to change the education system and how you learn, to change the police criminal and criminal justice system, to free the innocent that are in prison right now around the world rotting for no reason, to be able to help you predict what friend and business partner is gonna sc uh, screw you over. One of my business partners just had a million bucks taken from another business partner, just took it. He could have predicted it with the blockchain. In the back of his book on page, what was it, 230, it talks about the ability to use the blockchain in an uncorrupted way to decentralize decision making. Everything that sucks in our life, here it is, decentralized prediction markets. Now people are still talking about this stupid example they give is, oh, picking who wins the World Cup. That's not important for humanity in terms of, it's great, I love the World Cup. But I'm saying, that's not the big application for the blockchain. Sure, you could make some, if you could predict who would win the World Cup, you could make some money betting on it. It's not just betting like that. It's the right president being elected. It's the right school teacher. I mean, it, I don't know how it could be the right parents because parents has a biology thing, but maybe we'll figure it out. So I'm here with my brother. He's a little sick. So he's just chilling <coughs> while he has bronchitis. I think I have the black lung, actually. You got the black lung from <laughs> Zoolander? So let's talk about this. This is bigger than cryptocurrency. And I love cryptocurrency. This is even bigger than the thing I love. And here's why, I'm gonna explain. I came across this book, Bitcoin and Cryptocurrency Technologies. It's a little bit dated, but it's a Princeton textbook. So by these five authors, I thought it was kind of interesting. But one chapter towards the back, page 234 if you have this. We were, me and my brother were kind of discussing this and I said, let's turn the camera on. Prediction markets and real world data feeds. So I'm relatively new to the world of cryptocurrency, but I'm not new to the world of currencies. I worked for GE Capital a long time ago, more than 10 years ago. I've seen how money moves around. I've been a business person, and I've been involved in something and interested in something that's prediction markets for a long time. So one of my mentors in crypto space, Brock Pierce, I posted an interview we did at his house for like 45 minutes in Venice. And when I first, um, I've known Brock for a while from before cryptocurrency, just business in LA. And when we reconnected on crypto and he started teaching me stuff, the most fascinating thing, Ben, without a doubt, was prediction marketing. I mean, a hmm. prediction market. So basically, the blockchain, so this is what people don't understand that I realized new people. They think it's like cryptocurrency trading make money. That's a small part of this movement. You know, the movement that started well before Bitcoin. In this book, it talks about the history. I mean, these digital currencies that existed really in the 90s. And people had, even, I didn't know this, Elon Musk. His first idea was more like a cryptocurrency for PayPal. And then they pivoted to be like a bank transfer thing. I thought that was interesting. But anyway, back to prediction market. What if you could predict the future. Like this is, for example, if you want to be wealthy, best thing you could do is have a time machine. Go back in time to last year, last month, yesterday, and trades. You could trade, you could use the stock market basically to become the wealthiest person in the world. You know, over a, basically an overnight if you had enough capital. Um, what's the best way to know who to marry? If you had a time machine, you could like marry them, go into the future 10 years from now. See if you're happy or not. If you're unhappy, rewind in the time machine and not marry them. Like that, if you wanna know if your best friend is gonna screw you over, an employee, a business partner, best thing would be a time machine. Yeah. 
Definitely. So Ben, by the way, is very sick. I wouldn't mind it. You wouldn't. Ben is sick, so I'm, I'm talking while he's sick. But um, So here's the thing. Blockchain, which is the technology that basically is running this whole cryptocurrency world, this uh, decentralized way of running things. The more powerful application than cryptocurrency, in my opinion. Some people are going to disagree with me. Bigger than the changing how we use money will be how we predict things. I'll give you an example, like a practical, goofy one. Conor McGregor fight. Did you, were you there when I watched that? No. So the Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather boxing fight. I think it was, I saw it was the number two pay-per-view talk of all time, right? It was $100 million, $200 million, $300, maybe even more. Here's the crazy thing. I was going on like odds shark. There's like a Google, you can Google betting odds or you can just be in Vegas. If you're in the casinos, like I was at, staying at the Wynn not too long ago and they had the coin con. You didn't come with me for that, did you? No. Ben, you've been out of it. You've been missing all this crypto. Stuff. Yeah, where have I been? So the Wynn, if you walk through the casino, they have like the sports betting odds. So people were betting. I remember when they released the video of Floyd Mayweather boxing, all of a sudden, the odds went up because you saw how great he was on the speed bag. And then you had Floyd, when they did a video of him, it was like, oh, he's good. And then there was another video where he was training real slowly, and the markets changed. Like, they were betting that Floyd would win. Donald Trump, you could bet who would win. So what if blockchain technology could, and this book talks a little bit about it. It's not the world's greatest book, by the way. There's just kind of ding-dong. I don't know, maybe because it's 2016. They have a prediction market whole analysis of like who would, how you could use blockchain to figure out if the World Cup, which team would win. Win. So it has like Germany, Argentina, Brazil, United States, England, Netherlands, right? And it's like this whole system. Well, were you, you met Jeremy Gardner, right? Yeah. Jeremy was over on one of my past episodes on my show and we were talking about Augur, he put the REP coin. Because that's what Augur Yes, was, essentially, right? Augur will allow you to make a predictive bet basically on anything. You can make one up like, will Donald Trump be impeached? You know, will the Apple prices move up by $1 in the next two weeks? You can make a bet. And then they have the REP coin, which actually, dude, did you see how much the market cap went up on Augur? Yeah. It like tripled since Jeremy was on the show. It became a unicorn for a second, a billion dollar market cap of the, on the REP coin. Rep, so it's pretty crazy. He's a co-founder, not the only founder. But that's the first example. And what's interesting, so here's the thing with prediction markets. People want to cheat it. And this is where blockchain and the whole cryptography, the whole concept that it's very hard to hack Bitcoin. Now, you can hack people's, people's wallets get hacked. Um, you've seen these in ICOs, but... It's hard to like, if it's used correctly, you can, it's hard to use brute force to manipulate it. So what Augur, I'm not sure, Augur is a proof of stake, by the way. It's not proof of work like Bitcoin. It's not a mine, you don't mine it. So basically people post, I think the idea, I'm not an expert on Augur, but what Jeremy was telling me is like, you post, so you make a predictive bet or you confirm who won the bet, but you have to post your coins your tokens, your REP token. So if you bet wrong, you lose your tokens. So here's something that's interesting. I don't know if you watch this Doug Jones, um, Alabama versus, what's the other guy? There's Doug Jones and the guy who lost. So Doug Jones is the Democrat. First time a Democrat's won. Um, I was just, God. Roy Moore. Roy Moore, thank you, Sam. So Roy Moore, he says there is voter fraud. If the damn democracy was up on the blockchain, mm -hmm. it would be harder to manipulate elections. Mugabe yeah. and Zimbabwe, I think, isn't Mugabe in Zimbabwe? Mugabe, the dictator in Africa, this dude manipulated. Putin, you know, I saw like a week ago a guy is trying to run against Putin and they, they dug up some weird criminal case they made against him and disqualified him from voting because Putin's like, maybe the dude might beat me. I don't want to speak for Putin, by the way, but centralizing democracy doesn't work because people cheat. They bust in people from other voting things. 
So the blockchain has the potential to make voting spread out theoretically among 7.5 billion people in the world. So all of a sudden, if you want to know who wins the Conor McGregor fight, instead of a, a casino, which might be biased, you, spread, you ask 7 billion people on the planet Earth, and it's hard to, no one's going to be able to manipulate 7 people. 7 billion people. You can't bribe a dude in Nepal, a dude in Madagascar, a guy in Siberia. So by just spreading it out, decentralizing it, it becomes a bitch to manipulate. So you get better answers. And where this is important for society and where blockchain is, is this, that's why I say this, this side of the blockchain can have practical applications that could change your life, for example. And I've been interested in this. Well, I'm not a newbie in this. In, I, there's a great book by Nick Bostrom. I don't know if I have it here. I'm at my beach house in San Diego. So this is a, I leased a house for a year so I can be near my grandma. And I'm down here. I set it up. But I don't think I brought the book. There's a book that Bill Gates recommends called Super Intelligence. And basically, Super Intelligence says that um, there's three main types of artificial intelligence. We only hear about the sexy ones. Sexy one is, you know, cyborgs, Google Glass or something chip in your brain and all of a sudden you're smarter. That's one. Number two is like giant supercomputers, like Deep Blue played against, you know, a chess master and beat it. A big supercomputer, literally physically big some of these. Now they're smaller, but they're all, con you know, these powerful supercomputers. But that's not what interests me. There's a third one and nobody knows which one's going to be actually the winner will be, I bet, this is my bet, by the way, my predictive answer, it's going to be collaborative intelligence. So humans, sometimes I'm an idiot, and sometimes you're an idiot. But what if we could connect 7 billion people's brains to one quote-unquote mainframe computer? Now, what would that main computer be? The motherfucking blockchain. Mm. And what we know, there ain't, there's no computer... First of all, that can do what our brains can do. None. Computers lack emotion. Compu There's lots of problems with computers. They Actually, lack EQ. They're, they are now being able, there was like blind tests of them being able to create music better than humans. So they're getting there. They're, they're, they're getting there, but like, slowly. But creating music is one teeny part of our lives. Sure. Computers, well, it's no. Art. It's like, that was like a metaphor for a larger, grander. Yes. That was like the main thing. Yeah, like can computers create art, art or yeah, something? Which is like yeah, eventually computers. everything will be broken down, but I, if right now, and this is what America was supposed to be based on. Instead of having a centralized way of picking who rules you, so in the past, the Habsburg Empire, the longest running empire in human history, as far as I know, or in modern history, is the Habsburg Empire. It ran from the 1500s, it's Germany. It was the Austrian-Hungarian Empire from the 1500s to now, uh, the last century, it ended basically at World War I. So around 1914, during the World War I, it was fractured and that you ended it by 1918. So centralized. The only way you could rule was like you're the son or daughter or cousin or nephew of one of the Hasbro. The problem with that is you've got idiotic people who nepotism breeds, so that's a centralized way. So in America now, we have democracy, which is better than the Austrian-Hungarian hyper-centralized market, but it's still centralized. You got the Republican Party and you got the Democrat Party. And that's why my theory, why I don't love to vote, I'm like, is this the best America can do? And the answer is no. The blockchain could organize the United States better and make it, you wouldn't need the same kind of voter registration. Voter registration in and of itself biases the, the votes because some people don't have time to go register. Some people, it's too complicated. Some people maybe, you know, they don't have all their paperwork. They lost their driver's license. There's, there's fraud on registration where people register, are registered 83,000 times. You know what I'm saying? So if it was decentralized, no one person running it, controlled and verified by people. In, I don't know the best way to do it. It could be a proof of stake concept where people have coins and they're, they're saying, I think either Donald Trump or Hillary or, or you know, Sand, uh, whatever. You could have hundreds of people potentially as president. You could still have nominations moving up, 
like you know we have where and it could leave you with two but it could be selected and that's why I think for the last long time we don't necessarily always get the best person for the job I think we can look back through presidencies and be like was that the best person in the entire United States that's all I can say it's like we had Donald Trump we had Hillary we had a few other runners are these truly the best a 330 million person country like the United States has to offer I highly doubt it and it's because it's a centralized deal if you wanted to know you have a lot of lobbying in Washington so bullshit companies are able to do things because it's centralized one senator has to introduce a bill or only a handful if you had the blockchain you could put it up for the entire United States to be like you know should we be able to drill in Alaska don't you can't ask Goddamn Exxon that or Shell, what do you think they're going to say? As Charlie Munger says, what does he say, my favorite saying? Beware of perverse incentives. Beware of perverse incentives. Charlie Munger is a damn genius. And so the blockchain, by making things spread out, I don't like to use the word decentralized. You forget what that means. It's like when I hear people talk crypto, it's like, decentralized. I'm like, you don't even fucking remember what that means. (laughs) People think decentralized. It's not just a location decentralization. It's, it's everything gets spread out. It's not just that now all 50 states or the whole world votes, but it's also spread out among different worldviews, spread out among different genders and ethnicities and sexualities and like everything. And that's the collaborative mindset, 7 billion people plugged in. Imagine this. You want to know what house you should buy. Right now, here's your choices. Zillow. Okay, well, Zillow is not unbiased. It's a corrupted and beware of what? Perverse incentives. Perverse incentives. Zillow sells your email address to, you can see it right on the website. They don't even lie about it. To real estate agents. So they're going to take the data and push it in a way that you pay them. Well, I'm not calling them out as doing something wrong, unethical, or illegal, but I will say it's biased. I'm biased. I got businesses. We promote our products. We're, we're biased. But if you want to buy a house, best way, and Yelp tried to do this, you know, what restaurant should I eat at? It's supposed to be decentralized and everybody can vote, but we know people bullshit Yelp. We know people bullshit Zillow on real estate. You know your realtor ain't telling you the truth. Should I buy this house? Realtor, oh, it's a wonderful fixer-upper. And you get there and it's like the walls are falling down. It's got mold. There's ants coming through. Every known man. They're not going to tell you that, but a blockchain... If the blo- local blockchain of people who know that area are all using, and it might be some form of cryptocurrency like the, the Augur's coin, you know, the rep coin. It might be something else. But some way where people are incentivized to tell the truth about that house. And people vote with money. Boy, you want to know it. That's why I knew the media was bullshitting about Donald Trump. I knew it. I saw the signs. For example, on Twitter, every post Donald Trump did had double the likes and retweets of Hillary. I called it two months ahead of time, not because I'm smart, but because I looked at a more decentralized app. Twitter is not the blockchain. It could be put on the blockchain, but it's more decentralized. No one's hyper incentivized to like. Donald Trump wasn't buying bots that liked his shit. I don't think he was. I think, honestly, it was showing that a lot more people agreed with Donald Trump or didn't like Hillary. And lo and behold, on the day, I remember the day of the election. In the morning when I woke up, like, whatever, at noon, it goes, 90% chance Hillary's going to win this election. So I'm like, wow, I guess I was wrong. 5 p.m., 50% chance she wins. 8 p.m., 10% chance she wins. Whatever the votes, I think, are done at 10 p.m. or something. 10 p.m., 1% chance she win. Boom, Donald Trump, I'm going. The media is so corrupted that they got it wrong by 90. It's one thing to get it wrong, like 60% chance that Hillary's going to win. They got it wrong by 90%. I mean, that's, it's, more, it's on an absolute scale. We'll say 90. It was actually technically more than 90. And I'm going, that's the problem. We get our news from biased people. The, we need blockchain news. We need, for example, a decentralized way of what articles should be on the top of your news app. You can't buy your way to the top. 
7 billion people decide. And see, thumbs up kind of works. That's how like Facebook does it. Google, by the way, you know that all big, you know the guy that I had at my house? Uh, I have another podcast, the Ty Lopez main podcast. It's a business, more of my life. I had a guy who wrote this book called The Four. He's one of the top business professors in the world. So he flew out from New York. He's at NYU. And we talked about the big four companies. And I was thinking about it. So the big four are what? You know, what? Amazon. Amazon. Google, Google, Facebook. Facebook. Uh, Apple. Yeah, yeah, Apple. Okay? So think about why is Facebook used so much? Because they try to use predictive algorithms to show shit that you want to see in the news, right? So when you scroll through your feed, it's like your mom's birthday pictures first. They're trying to predict. See, everything's predictive market. But they don't use the blockchain. So guess what happens? People bullshit the Facebook algorithm. First of all, I mean, I buy promoted posts so I can manipulate the market and move my shit to the top. Number two, with blockchain, uh, with Facebook, a problem is, we saw this. Russian people, what was into this scandal where the Russians were manip- buying ads and you know manipulating the elections? Yeah. Couldn't do that with blockchain because it's the, the whole concept of the blockchain and the way it's veri- <clears throat> the consensus is verified is hard to cheat. Theoretically, things could be cheated, but it's a biatch. Maybe with quantum you know, computing, it'll be able to be done. If we, if, but not yet. Facebook. What's YouTube and Google? Google, when you Google something, this is what the guy said. He said, Google is our modern day God. In the past, when we wanted to know, you know what we should do with our life, we prayed to God. And he's like, now you Google, what career should I have? And so we're relying on Google as a lowercase g in God, not like really. So we're relying on Google. Is Google able to be manipulated? Oh my God. I, of course. First of all, you can buy ads, which I do. So I can pop myself on the top. Number two, yeah. guys are messing yeah. with the SEO, with SEO out. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think YouTube's that, I, Google's that accurate anymore. Bullshit comes up to the top. No. Just Google yeah, how to make a million dollars or something absurd like that. The, when I, I did a thing, just a test, how to make a million dollars, Google. The first article, there, it was like seven ways to make a million dollars. One was babysit for 40 years. <laughs> the other one was drive an Uber for 30 years. I'm like, what? This is the best advice in the world. That's why I'm thinking of, we're working on an ICO, a coin that would de- decentralize education and how we learn, because it's all sin. Think of the school system in America, it's bullshit. You know what Joel Salatin, my first mentor, told me? You see that video I did when I was walking the farm with him? Mm. Were you yeah. there? No, but I saw it. Joel goes, you know what's wrong with school? People who don't have your best interest at heart tell you what you have to learn. Oh, you gotta mm. learn the hypotenuse of a triangle. Well, what if I fucking wanna learn how to start a business? Fuck you. <laughs> and you're sending. What about you go to college, you get textbooks. What if I don't want that textbook that's $400? I want to learn from a YouTube video. You think Harvard's going to be like, oh, okay. Don't buy the textbook. No, they're going to kick you out. We have a centralized education system. Centralizing things sometimes has efficiencies of scale. There's times when centralization works theoretically with the utilities, with centralizing the army. You know, but even then, look at Switzerland has a decentralized army. You know how Switzerland works? Every person has a gun and is trained in the military. And you know what? No country's messed with Switzerland, partly because they're in the mountains and they're small, but partly how do you attack a society where everybody has a gun? That's what happened to America in the Vietnam War. Boy, you read the Vietnam War was a disaster because there was, yes, there was a standing army that we were fighting against. But there also was everybody and their brother was fighting you. So you're an American troop and the, the five-year-old that brings a bomb on you, you know, drops a bomb on you, a grenade or whatever. So all of a sudden, that's decentralizing the military. And it's very powerful. Genghis Khan had his decentralized army and is the greatest conqueror of all time, even bitter, bigger than Alexander the Great. The Native Americans, the Sioux Indians, some of these, whether, whether, it, whether it's you know, Sitting Bull, Red Cloud, you look at Geronimo... They had no one who was listed as a leader. You know that? Hmm. You only, people followed the people, it was decentralized, who had the best results and who was the most brave. But, so when you, the second you, yeah, the second you centralize stuff, lots of unintended consequences. And everything is centralized now. From our political system of lobbies, voting, centralized betting odds are at big casinos, 
Google is centralized with one company that can change the algorithm. Did you see who got sued? Was it Google just lost a huge lawsuit and I, um, they were not showing. So Google has Gmail, right? It's one of their most used services. Proton Mail is a company out of Switzerland that's more secure. Okay, I just read an article. They lost billion, multi-billion dollar in the, in the European court. Google now owes billions of dollars because they removed Proton Mail from showing when you typed in secure mail. Even though it was the most Googled secure mail system, they dropped it off because they Why had... Why not allowed to do that? That's Stone called mail? a monopolistic... Mm. No, you're not allowed to do that. They got... You get sued for basically anti-trade. You can't... I mean... You used to be able to do that. Rockefeller became the wealthiest man in the world, $600 billion in modern day dollars because he had the ability to manipulate markets by having a monopoly, a collusion of prices. Everybody selling orange get together. That's what the mafia used to do. You all get together and fix the price. Yo, everybody selling bacon in Brooklyn, you sell it for two bucks a pound or we come beat your ass. And they raise the price for the public. So most countries, the United States, they, we've tried to put in some anti-trade things. But central, that's what Google, that's what the app store, the good, so if you look at good things, by the way, Amazon is a damn manipulated thing. Doesn't it suck you go to Amazon? The other day I was trying to buy a new measuring tape. We're doing some construction, little home improvement. So I go to Amazon. I want to find the best hammer, the best you know, tape measure, and it's just like, do I sort by ratings? Because I know people that know how to manipulate the Amazon ratings. So I don't trust the Amazon ratings. You could go in there. New York Times, Amazon best-selling books. You know how easy it is to game that? You could put, I could put up a bullshit ebook with five pages that say, you suck. You suck, you suck, I'm awesome. You're awesome, I suck, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna jump off a cliff, you're gonna, like just fill it up with gibberish. I have guys that will make me an Amazon bestseller. New, even Barnes and Noble, all these New York Times bestsellers, there's dudes. I, there's a company that I know. I won't say their name. You pay them twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars, they guarantee you bestseller status. They go and buy the books in mass. They send people to buy them for you. It's a centralized system. New York Times bestseller list is centralized. Amazon bestseller. It's all in. The, in many ways, when you hear the word one company owns it, you know you can add two letters, BS. It's BS. Who's president now is BS. Whether you like Donald Trump or hate him, I would contend there's somebody better. Whether he's better than Hillary is not the point to me. I would contend that's not the best. And I would contend that Hillary wasn't the best that America had to offer either. I, they might be good people. I, I interviewed Hillary. It was a short interview. I can't tell you much about her from my interview. Uh, she's not dumb. I can tell you that from my interview. But I can't tell if she should be the president or not. And so everything sucks. Even Tinder centralizes things in the dating markets. So there'll be a blockchain dating one day. And there's already people working on blockchain dating now because it centralizes it. For example, I, I had the co-founder of Tinder. I don't know if you guys saw him. Do you see him at my house? I did a Snapchat story with him. He's the guy who it came up with the swipe right, swipe left for Tinder. There's multiple mm. co-founders. And we were talking and it's like, dude, they have an algorithm. If you don't fit in the algorithm, girls don't even see you. They decide, they play God. So they have a, and, and they do it well. I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying. You can't argue a fact, right? It's like a priori logic. This is guarantee, man, that if you define centralized as one company, then Tinder is centralized, not decentralized. So a better way to do dating in the future, and maybe Tinder will adopt, maybe Facebook will adopt, maybe Amazon will adopt, maybe New York Times bestseller will adopt the blockchain. Sometimes I doubt it because the entrenched incumbent rarely wants to surrender their position. <laughs> but... Think of how badass it would be, my friend, if you could literally go into an app. Nobody is there to corrupt, or what is the word? Nobody has perverse, perverse incentives. incentives. And they literally show you the right girls or the right guys that you should date and marry. Is there value in that? Hell yeah. 
What if the stock market wasn't manipulated? Trust me, even though the stock market says there's no insider information, come on, man. What planet? If you're playing poker for 30 minutes and you haven't figured out who the sucker in the room is, you're the sucker. Everything's manipulated. So the real thing, this cryptocurrency thing, which I'm all for and people, you know, I've got a cryptocurrency course and you can learn how to trade and you can trade it and make money on the volatility. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, trading on volatility actually is a predictive market tool. A lot of smart people trading puts the price at the proper equilibrium price. So the main thing that will mess up cryptocurrency is if it gets centralized. And the US dollar mm -hmm. is centralized by the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve, you think the Federal Reserve has your best interests at heart? I'm not saying they're evil Illuminati. I'm just saying they, they are just humans. Humans are biased in all kinds of things. That's like when you read, have you ever seen, like you know what pork belly bills are? So mm -hmm. Basically, is it pork belly? One of those names. But basically, there's these, when like a senator passes a law, he'll pass a sweeping law, like capital gains rate change in the United States. And then you read on page 17 of the bill and it says, and my home state gets a free library mm. built. Yeah, yeah. They just like put shit in and they don't even, they, it, this new tax bill that Donald Trump, and it, you know, and I'm not even anti-Trump or pro-Trump, I could kind of care less. It's all centralized to me. They put in things like, you get more deductions on private jets, which is fine. I guess I fly in a private jet, but it ain't gonna help most people. I didn't grow up with money. I grew up poor. You think it would've helped my single mom who made 20 grand a year that the law now is better for private jet deductions? That's what happens when you centralize. People, even good people, some senator, even good teachers in the school system are being manipulated by a centralized market. And they're sitting there and teaching kids like, okay class, Open your packet. We will learn. We will read the most boring book in the world, Siddhartha, <laughs> and we will make you never want to read a book again. We will give you uh, an extremely boring application of why you should learn calculus. We won't make it fun. We won't let you trade stocks. Why don't they let kids trade the stock market with software? Maybe it's not real money, but get people excited. Give out prize out once a week. A person who trades. Don't you wish you knew how to? Trade stocks, don't you wish you knew how to buy a house? Don't you wish you knew all the school system centralized? It sucks. And we spend 200000 in the state of New York, they're spending $200,000, I read a report, per student. For what? To pop out illiterate kids? The school system ain't working right. And if you're too dumb to understand, sometimes people want to debate me. I'm just like, really, dude? Really? I can qualitatively and quantifiably prove that. You can compare America to other countries like Latvia. We lose, even though we have the highest GDP. We have five X. The, we have the highest GDP in the United States of the next five countries added together. But yet we can't educate people. We have a badass military, better in our education. But again, when you centralize military command, if you study, see the blockchain could decentralize how we make decisions and going to war. Gulf War, the second Gulf War, George Bush made an executive decision that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. We went in, you had probably 100 or 200,000 casualties if you count the Iraqi side, maybe more. You have, a, you have insane suicide rates for, for truth. I'm not saying you should never go to war. World War II, you had to go to war. Adolf Hitler forced the hand of the world. There is a justifiable war. But my question is, if the blockchain had existed, and you put it to a vote of all 330 million people, unbiased. So a war, a, a, a company that's making military planes doesn't get more votes. It's spread out. See what I'm saying? So like my 99 year old grandma gets a vote on the blockchain, anonymous too. She doesn't have to leave her house. She doesn't have to register. There's no peer pressure. It's all done and. Once it's submitted, my grandma's vote, your vote, everybody's vote, it can't be manipulated. It's locked. And it's on an open ledger that everybody can see, the consensus. I bet you we wouldn't have gone to war. I bet you we wouldn't have gone to the Vietnam War. I bet you we would have gone to World War II and World War I. We wouldn't have gone to Korea. I doubt it. We probably wouldn't have been involved in a lot of the actions. And there would probably be, you know, your uncle would still be alive. Your great uncle, your, your aunt, like people got blown away. People got no arms, no legs. It's war is necessary, but it shouldn't be centralized. 
all the wars in history that have been a horrific experience for the people who lived on that. There was a war, if you read, there was wars, and of course people don't know history anymore because we go through the public school system, but there was 100 years wars. Do you know what that means? Can you imagine if our whole life, you born and you die, and the war was going on. You, you would think war. That would war, just be your reality. Yeah, it's like. Yeah, but it was a bad reality. It's a horrible reality. So, hundreds of years war. Disaster. Because it was centralized. All these wars. Stalin and Mao Zedong combined killed 100 million people because it was, they had centralized power. Even the Communist Party. It's funny. Communism. Have you ever read Karl Marx, Ben? No, I haven't. I'm not a communist. I'm a capitalist in some ways, but... Karl Marx was a smart dude. I mean, when you read his stuff, I can see why half the world became communist. The guy was made a compelling case. But they forgot one thing. Communism would have worked on the blockchain. It doesn't ever work centralized. The second Mao Zedong got all the power in China, guess what happened? He starved his own people. 50 million people died. He killed all the teachers and the engineers. You think that? Stalin, same damn way. Stalin goes out there. He had a saying, if there's 10, and this is not his exact words, but something like this, he would have a quota on a city, kill or imprison 10,000 people. And one of the mayors or the rulers of that small town wrote back, called back to Stalin and said, I don't think there's 10,000 people here who did anything wrong. Stalin said, I don't care. If you get 10,000, you'll find the 10 who did something wrong. He was a madman. Half the fucked up things in the world is because a decentralization brings narcissists to the top. The second you decent, the Amish, I live with the Amish for two and a half years. They don't, not on the blockchain because they don't have electricity, but they have something, the same thing to become a minister, a preacher, to, which is kind of a position of power. You can't ask to be one. They draw straws. Hmm. They spread it out. No one person. So now, guess what? Guess who aspires to be a pastor or a war general? I mean, a general in the army or a president? Highly correlated. Dr. David Buss and I have talked about this. Preeminent evolutionary psychologist. People attracted who say from a young age, well, I want to be the next ruler of my country. Highly correlated with narcissism, Machiavellianism, and psychopathy. And so, it's technically psychopathy. Psychopathy, Machiavellian, these are the dark triad traits. That's exactly who you don't want to be the damn minister. So the blockchain could basically, you wouldn't elect yourself as president. It could be like, you 40 people in, I'm in San Diego, you're on San Diego Council. Why? It's like a draft. You're good people. People like you in San Diego. Imagine if we were ruled. Now, the greatest thing, imagine if your parents came out on the blockchain. I don't know how that happens because we still have biology. But if you could pick your parents, think how much better half the world would have. My, our grandfather, you don't remember your great-grandfather. I don't either. He was, he was born in the 1800s. But my grandma's still alive. She's 99. She told me, Ty, your, gran, your great-grandfather used to say the worst thing for most people is their parents. So I don't think the blockchain can solve that yet because you have, you have to somehow be able to deconstruct biology. So forget that. But everything else, who your teachers are. Teachers should not be able to say, I want to be a teacher per se. I mean, you need to have voluntary occupations. But what it should do is the blockchain could say, here's 10,000 people who would be good teachers. Consensus voting was reached, result was reached through the blockchain. It was verified through some maybe economic crypto, like a proof of stake model. The pr your, um, and now, among those 10,000 people, any of them can raise their hand and say, yes, I want to be a teacher. So you wouldn't force teachers, but you would create a pool. Same with the president. Presidents, if the very fact that you want to be a president should disqualify you. Think about police. You know why there's so much conversation about police brutality? Simple, look at the statistics. Dark triad trait of psychopathy is highly correlated with wanting to carry a gun and enforce laws. What do you think? Nice, super nice people? I'm not disparaging police. I'm saying I ain't fucking stupid. 
Who do you think wants to be a general in the army? Your nicest brother or sister? Goes, you know what I want to do? Kill people. I want to be a Navy SEAL. I read an article, 80% of Navy SEALs are legally and healthy psychopaths. Not all healthy, but the point is you could be a psychopath and still do good things. But it's highly correlated with psychopathy, and you probably want your Navy SEALs to be psychopaths in a certain sense. But do you want your police to be full of psychopaths? See, in countries like Israel or certain countries or Switzerland, everybody has to go in the military. It's probably a better model. Because then some people in the military are just normal people who aren't psychopaths and didn't go, I want to be able to shoot people. Police should be like this. You take the people, the blockchain reaches consensus through some voting mechanism. It's verified as not manipulated through the blockchain, through this open kind of ledger system. And you identify in the city of San Diego, 17,000 people who could be police officers. You send them all an email. Who here wants to be an email? Uh, uh, you're nominated to be a police officer. You, don't, you can say no or you can say yes. But you can't become a police officer without being nominated. And I, I saw this uh, interesting thing. In Maryland, there was a police officer that were a woman approached, because there's this big thing in Maryland where the police took a guy, put him in a headlock, and he basically died in the, before he even got to the hospital. I mean, to the police station, because they just were rough on the guy. And they juxtaposed that. They compared that to this female police officer who approached two people in a fight. Instead of pulling her gun, she said, dance off. And believe it or not, the two dudes that were fighting turned around. They were like young teenagers, and they had like a dance off. And she solved it. Who do you want to be your police officer? The dude who pulls the gun when they don't have to just because they got on a power trip? Or some person who's like, oh, I'm going to try the easy way. If a dance-off doesn't work, I might have to pull my gun. But why not try the dance-off first? See, if we had consensus on who's nominated to be school teachers and presidents and military leaders, and who do you want having their thumb on the nuclear bomb? Somebody who loves war or somebody who's like, I only do this if I have to? And we're ruled by madmen, and we can't understand why our life isn't great. The blockchain can change it. Now, I don't know all the technical. I'm not a dev. I'm not a programmer. I, but I do understand the general concept of co collaborative intelligence ability to do predictive marketing. And this will change the damn game for you, me, kids, grandkids, if we can pull it together. And that's why I'm pro-cryptocurrency, because cryptocurrency is one-fifth maybe less of the potential of the blockchain. This, dis this ability to do predictive and, and to solve problems of centralization and corruption, this is 95% of what this whole crypto movement is, blockchain movement. This is 95. Everything will be on the blockchain. 95? 95, maybe 99. What if there's something we haven't even thought about though? Yeah, but it'll be around future predictions. Richard Dawkins, amazing book. I interviewed him about four years ago. You know, he wrote The Selfish Gene. And one of the things in The Selfish Gene is he goes, organisms, he's talking about evolution. Organisms that can predict the future without trial and error. So you don't want to have to elect Joseph Stalin to presidency for 40 years and go, oops, we made a mistake. Because he goes, trial is costly and mistakes are deadly. So organisms, the reason you and I, humans, have a very developed front part of our brain, the neocortex. Like we still have the same brain stem like an animal, the reptilian mind. We have the medulla, we have the cerebellum, you got the lobe, you have the amygdala where you store memories. Lots of things have that. But humans have an advanced neocortex, this front part. They call the P, uh, pre median, pre, uh, pre -median, PMFC, PFMC, something. I'm not a, my best friend's a molecular neuroscientist. I'm not. But the reasons humans have such big heads, basically, and big brains is for predictive things. The one thing humans can do better than anything on the planet. Ants can't do this. Killer whales can't do it. They're smart in some ways. More around people and animals, I'm like, mm, animals may be smarter than people. But they're not smarter at predictive things. My two German shepherds completely have zero ability to go. I wonder in one and a half years who will be the president. I mean, even if they could theoretically understand that today 
Donald Trump is the president, they couldn't fucking con put conjecture out in the future. So what makes humans horrible and great at the same time is we can predict things. So changing money isn't that important. Money's not been a huge part of humanity if you look at the broad stroke, the broad scale of human civilization. We've been on the planet, let's say, for, you know, it depends who you ask. But let's just say modern civilization 10 to 50,000 years. A vast uh, majority of that time, we did not have currency as we knew it. We had bartering. Native Americans had wampum, this kind of seashell. There was exchange for a long time. But humans can live without currency. You'd be fine. But 10,000 years ago, there was, or, or more, there was an ice age. And some humans predicted it and migrated. They say we might all be related to about 50 to 100 humans. Isn't that crazy? Hmm. They predicted the Ice Age. They moved correctly. One of the reasons that you know we're all part Neanderthal. Did you do your 23 and Me? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in 23 and Me, you can see how Neanderthal you are. Basically 100% of humans. Hmm. Because Neanderthals were cut distant relatives of Homo sapiens. They bred together. How they Neanderthal are you? I didn't Most even see that. Most of us are 1% to 4%. Everybody. Oh, huh. I, I think four that. is high. If you're four, you might. I've seen. Been four. <laughs> Adrian. Yeah, with this I've hair. seen some football players and basketball players that look like they might be eight <laughs> percent. But the point is, freaking uh, Neanderthals didn't predict things well. They couldn't predict, for example, that Homo sapiens were going to kill them and move or develop more powerful tools. So the reason I say 99% to me, that's my opinion, some people are going to disagree, is we can live without money, but we can't live without predictions. Telling the future or getting close to approximating the future. Think how poker works. He or she sitting at the table that can predict the odds with a higher, nobody's 100% in poker, but some people can read the hands better than others and they win the goddamn more money. But I'd argue that, that we've lived for at least 50,000 years with decent predictions and this is going to make our predictions in crap like a yes but way this is better. utopia what i'm talking about. yeah but we can survive without it which means that we can survive so we i agree so we can survive without currency and we can survive without predictive without what? better predict i mean we need some sort of prediction yeah, but I'm saying seemingly better to survive currency does improve quality of life but better prediction 100x is your life. Just think of this. Yeah. That ben, you go back in time. You become, pick a year, 10 years old again. Is right. there anything you would do different, knowing what you know? Of? Yeah, I mean, I would, I would choose better friends, better teachers, learn different skills. Would you play as much video games? Yeah, well, I would play less video games, eat less bad food. Smoke less uh, weed. Smoke less weed, definitely. But maybe you uh, wouldn't, instead of going to high school. Yeah, I wouldn't go to high school. You would, would travel the world. I would have probably just come work for you if I would know what I know now. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so what, I'm, what you're saying is you could revolutionize your life if you had that predictive power at age 10 at your hands. For sure. So no doubt. My, I agree with you. That's a good point you make, that we can live without blockchain improving the quality of predictive. What I'm saying is if I had to choose between improving two things to make my life better, the U.S. dollar switching completely to crypto, that's going to bring me a lot of benefits, I think, in the long run, and to society. Maybe it's eight steps forward. You fix the damn predictive problem, it's 800,000 steps forward. Mm -hmm. Wow. 800,000. It's an order of magnitude, and I'm probably understating it. Hmm. Just think of this. What if you could predict that XYZ actions would make you depressed, suicidal, and kill yourself? Uh, once you die, it's an infinite eight sideways decrease in quality of life. <laughs> zero, you are alive even if you have a shitty life, and you go to zero. Well, you know why a lot of people are depressed? There's many reasons, but I talked to Dr. David Buss extensively on this. Good bit of depression and anxiety are functionally adaptive. Functionally adaptive. What that means is... Functional adaption means that evolution has kept it in the evolutionary chain because it was helpful. People who have this trait. So depression and sadness is a functional trait. If you were doing the wrong thing over and over 
and getting depressed about the results. It was your brain going, don't do that anymore. So if you're drinking a ton of alcohol or you were marrying the wrong person, having kids, and then you're depressed because they take everything from you and cheat you and lie, the depression that comes inevitably after that, if you're a normal sane human, <coughs> is like evolution going, stop it or we'll wipe you off the planet. Now, that's an oversimplification. Depression is a complex thing. There are other pure physical reasons people have. Some people have freaking, my Herman, my neuroscience friend just did a brain scan. You can have problems in the brain, areas that never fully formed, areas that have you know, a form of, of uh, decay or corruption. It's not the right word, but you have malformed functionality in your brain. And some people are depressed because their mom drank alcohol when they were, and it's nothing they did wrong. But many people, many of us who experience pain, suffering, sadness, depression, it's a direct repercussion of not having what's called prudence. Prudence is the technical sub-facet of, of conscientiousness. Conscientiousness is highly predict, uh, correlated, highly correlated. If you look at something like the Hexaco score, conscientiousness is extremely correlated with one thing. Money. Better outcomes. M money, success, better outcomes. And one of the, there's four sub-facets to conscientiousness. One's prudence. Prudence is decision making. Basically everything you won't like about your life is because of a decision. You made a decision to procrastinate on something, to be lazy, to trust the wrong person, to marry the wrong person, to pick the wrong career, to go to the wrong school and get the wrong major, to get, take the wrong debt, to, you know, to spend money when you didn't have. All these are decisions. So prudence and prediction, the two Ps, these go together. So if you can up your prudence levels by increasing the quality of predictive value, then you buy the right house. Then you choose the right career. Then you make the best you pick the best business partner who doesn't, one of my friends got a business partner on the East Coast who just took $1 million and ran and actually sued my friend saying he's owed more even though he literally just stole the money. And my friend goes, now I gotta go to court. And the court's bullshit because my lawyer's like, yeah, you'll get your million back because the guy's obviously defrauding you but it'll cost 700,000 in legal fees or 600,000 because the guy's using the million dollars to hire his own lawyers. It's another thing we haven't even gotten to. Imagine if you could more accurately predict who committed crimes. You know how centralized the current criminal justice system is? You know how many people are rotting in jail or accused or in jail for shit they didn't do? And then there's people out innocent who are actually guilty. The idea of 12 jurors sounds great. It's a primitive form of decentralized consensus because you get a jury of your peers, right? Bob, Susie, Andy, you know, and they they're supposedly don't know O.J. Simpson. They supposedly don't know the Peterson trial. But unless they're on another planet, they pro anybody who didn't know who O.J. Simpson was who made it to the jury, you got a question, is this who we want deciding? So in the criminal justice system, the consensus mechanism is 12 jurors, Okay, but let's look at plea bargaining. Here's what plea bargaining is doing to people. I just had someone, by the way, break into my house on camera for two hours. Tried to break, get all four of my car. I had four cars in the garage, two outside. Tried to start the Lambo, the Rolls Royce. He backed out. Two hours, he packed snacks, which is the greatest part. He <laughs> went in my kitchen. Didn't he pack nuts and he made himself <laughs> yeah, like sandwiches. Made sandwich. Put them in the trunk of the Maserati. Backed out, couldn't figure out how to open the gate. The police come with guns drawn, put them in jail. It's four uh, uh, deg uh, counts of grand larceny, because uh, grand theft auto, because he's turning the car on. He went into the house while there's people were upstairs. My brother and his girlfriend, not you, my other brother Jacob was there. And so that makes it a strikeable offense because if you break into a house when people are in there, it's more dangerous than if it's an empty house. Most robbers want, he thought it was an empty house. Professional thieves, a police officer was telling me, the detective on the case told me, they try to break into empty houses so if they get caught, it's not a strikeable offense. Three strikes in California, you get life in prison. This was strikeable. But the dude's only in prison. He was in jail for 60 days. He pleaded guilty, and it's too overcrowded. That's another problem. We got overcrowded jails because you're putting people in who didn't do shit wrong or they smoked weed. They used to put people in jail. They still do in countries. The fuck? Who cares? Like, really? Like, did you think the problem on planet Earth is marijuana? See, alcohol lobbies have 
completely corrupted the government system and found consensus that alcohol is legal, which 70% of murders and crimes are committed on alcohol, but marijuana isn't because marijuana doesn't have a big enough lobby. There's no centralized, there's no giant vodka companies and Budweiser and all these that can lobby for with billions of dollars. So you get a, we have a completely twisted, but the same thing happens in the criminal justice system. For one, you have for profit prisons. I didn't know this. Hmm. Victoria's Secret is using prison labor, which is mostly black people and Latin people, mostly brown people, we could say. To literally, that's why Victoria's Secret, part of the reason that girls are buying, what did they have this, one of my exes would tell me, she liked Victoria's Secret because you got like four for 20 or something. It was like some deal for 20 bucks, you got like four bras and panties or something. Yeah, it's being done by slavery labor. They pay them like 35 cents a day or something to sit there and sew all day. So big prisons, talk about, beware of what, Ben? Perverse incentives. Perverse incentives. Should not be able, what I think prison should do, why not the money, pay them a fair wage, but take the, and pay back what people have done, restitution. But anyway, that's not even the problem. And now in the criminal justice system, there's another perverse incentive, which is they did that, what was that Denzel movie we saw? <coughs> Israel J something. Or? What was that, Israel J, Denzel? It's not a great movie. Did you like it, man? Uh, it was all right. It was all right. But one of the things that he was accurate, he talked about plea bargaining. Basically, there's overcrowding of courts. So they just say, plead guilty even if you didn't do anything wrong. And we'll let you out after three months in jail versus if you go to court and we find you guilty, it's mandatory 10 years. So they freak people out. So people are saying, I'm guilty when they're not. And then they put them in a system for a year or whatever, and they learn how to be criminals. And the recidivism rate, which is the rate of people going back to prison, is nuts. You got 70, 80 percent of people falling back into something. I think it depends. That's don't trust that statistic. It's a high amount of people. So the blockchain could theoretically, you could put evidence up on the blockchain and let 7 billion people vote on if the person's guilty. Or maybe 7 billion is too much, but you could let, forget a jury of 12, 12 can be corrupted, but a jury of 10,000 people in 20 countries of all ages, backgrounds is more likely, that's collaborative intelligence. You, you'd probably free half the people, maybe not half, but you'd free 20% of people on death row. I just, I contribute to this thing called the Innocence Project, and which is, I contrib- it's a charity, it's a good one if you want to give money to, and they, they give money to do DNA tests for people who have questionable, and they just let out a dude who went in prison at 17 years old for rape and robbery, and they just let him out now, he's 47 years old, DNA exonerated him, that it was impossible, it's like a one in a 500 million chance that he was the person. And this happened also in Tennessee about three months ago, and, and the state of Tennessee gave him for 20 years unjustly in prison. He got a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. It's the max. It's either a thousand or ten thousand. Imagine someone takes away 20 to 30 years of your life. This shit should be on the motherfucking blockchain. Consensus verified, proof of stake. You could, but maybe we should build a coin around that. It's just BS. And so, yes, you're right, Ben. Humanity will survive, but most of humanity is in massive pain. Most of humanity is experiencing massive uh, injustice, one form or another. It could be small. It could be like the job they have. Their boss is an asshole. Put bosses up on the blockchain. You know, let there be consensus. Companies like Glassdoor try to do this, right? But I have a but Glassdoor. It's bullshit because if you fire somebody who is an asshole. They can go on Glassdoor, just like Yelp. But Glassdoor, if you don't know, is like a Yelp for companies. So employees can just post, my boss was an asshole, and make up shit. And there's no form of consensus. You can't, Yelp is bullshit. Did you see Yelp got in trouble? Because you could buy, I got a perfect example. The BBB, the Better Business Bureau. So if you don't know, whatever country you're listening, Better Business Bureau has this thing. You get an A. Or an A plus, or an A minus, or an F for your business. So one of my businesses years ago, I just was like randomly, someone customer support was like, we have a D on Better Business Bureau. I'm like, what the hell? We don't even have many complaints. So we call up Better Business Bureau, and they go, well, you're not a member. 
I'm like, what does that mean? They're like, it's $1,000. And by the way, Google it. I ain't making shit up. Call the Better Business Bureau. So I go, okay, I'll be a member. I pay $1,000. Within a week, I'm an A minus or A. What kind of bullshit predict it? Imagine extortion. if. Yeah, it's That's extortion. extortion. Yelp got in trouble for that. Glass door bullshit, you motherfuckers. I'm like, where's your consensus? You can't, how could you? That's like saying this. What did Yelp do? Yelp was making people pay or they would, would put the negative ratings for your business at the top. Fuck <laughs> those guys. That shit ain't right. Like, I'm not a saint, but fuck those people. Oh, you know, I'm like, give me a break. You're gonna because there's that's what consensus means. That's what the open ledger, the concept decentralizing. For example, imagine this: Donald Trump and Hillary run for presidency, and you let them count their own votes. What do you think they're both going to come back with? Hillary's going to be like, oh, I lost this bag of votes from uh, Alabama, but I kept. Uh, and she's like, look, I won. I'm president. And Donald Trump goes. You ain't going to believe this. I counted the votes and I won. That's what Yelp is. Anybody just posts and wins. I'm like, what the fuck? That's what Better Business Bureau is. Let's centralize this. Imagine if a restaurant who has dirty food that you're going to get food poisoning. So they should have an F. They could pay $1,000 and the health commissioner would be like, A, would you want to eat there? Hell no. So you're right. Humans can survive. But it's like we live in a world of food poisoning all the time. And it, what was that? What was that one show? Was it Black something? Black Magic or something? Black, Black Mirror. Black Mirror. There's. I haven't even seen it. My cousin said there's a show where like everybody has ratings that you're wearing glasses and you see people. Wouldn't that be cool? Before you pick a business partner, you look and it's like a rating of whether they're gonna rip you off. Like Uber has. If you're a 4.6 star below on Uber, you get fired by Uber. And Uber's right. It's hard to manipulate. It's somewhat Uber is not on the blockchain. I don't think, obviously, as they're doing their consensus on what drivers suck and what are awesome. But it's decentralized in the fact that let's say a driver drives a hundred different people from all walks of life. They require people to put in one to five stars. Even if he paid his buddy to ride with him three times. It's too many votes from other people he can't manipulate. That's actually a good way to think about what the blockchain, that decentralization of consensus and predictive marketing would do. Marketing would do. <clears throat> I should have this standing. Hold on so you can see. Uh, I'm not promoting this book. For all of you who are fucking butthurt about everything, I ain't get paid a penny for this book. I don't even know who they are. Uh, Princeton didn't pay me. Full disclosure. But it'd be good if there's consensus if you could verify whether that's true. Because maybe I'm lying. Maybe they pay me a million dollars to do a YouTube video like this. You know? <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but the odds are probably not because... That would be the best product promotion video for a textbook ever. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think like they're going to get it. They paid me a million. They lost money. Ain't nobody yeah. buying a million dollars worth of a textbook. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Vo- voluntarily. <laughs> <It's> just... But, <laughs> so I, I think uh, my basic contention, I got to go. I got to call. What did he say? What did Rob say? They were just said they can wait. Yeah. So we'll tell them we'll be on in five minutes. Blockchain. Don't just think about crypto. Read about the damn block. Read about the concept of consensus, the predictive. Look at things like these proof of stake models that are going to happen. Um, there's another one. Uh, Ethereum's thinking of forking into proof of stake. I read, you yeah. know, either a hard fork or a whole move. Augur's one. Uh, what other proof of stake ones? Well, there's proof of storage ones that are coming out. Uh, EOS, I think, is a form. EOS, but one of Brock Pierce's. Filecoin is one. Filecoin is proof of storage, but proof of stake. I think EOS will be proof of stake, but it's it's like a it's a modified centralization. There's like 21 or 23 nodes or something. I forget how they. There's some reasons to do it that way. But it's interesting. Yeah, I was actually talking to Jeremy Gardner. Uh, Augur is built on Ethereum. So there's also a way they're doing it through smart contracts. So smart contracts is another kind of way to set it up like this proof of stake model where you, you know, stake your tokens to, to arrive. Because smart contracts are like automatic rules that happen. So like if, you're Don, if you want to know if Donald Trump won, it would be like, 
automatically if X amount of votes come in comparatively to Hillary Clinton, automatically, there's no human judgment in it. There's no count. The shit, the count is happening behind a major cryptography that would be extremely hard to manipulate. It's hard to manipulate this stuff because it's all posted for millions of people to see continually as it's verified. So you can't sit there and go, oh, like too many people would see it. It'd be like this. If President Trump and Hillary, every vote was as people voted, got stuck on a rolling scroll and you could watch it. And you could see, okay, it's very clear one of these candidates' name is showing more. Then when the final votes are done, if they go up, the other candidate won, you'd be like, bullshit, I've been watching this ledger and every name is, you know, Donald Trump or every name is Hillary. And so if at the end they try to give a centralized answer, you can be like, I call bullshit because I just watched it happen real time. Does that make sense? It'd be like if the whole world was like on Skype or FaceTime and like you had a computer monitor, you could watch 7 billion FaceTimes and you go one, two, three, everybody vote. And it, you just like listen to, and if you hear, everybody's like, Donald Trump! And you hear, barely hear Hillary, and everybody's set to the same audio level. <laughs> That's not a great metaphor, but it's a shitty one that kind of illustrates what I'm talking about. Imagine that. So you want to know who should be president, which house you should buy, who, what girl you should marry. Imagine every person that's ever met that girl you want to marry or date, Ben. You press one button and they come up on FaceTime, but they're like hidden, like the mafia. You know how like the mafia like distorts the voice so that they're not afraid to speak the truth. No one would ever know. And you're like, should I date Susie? Is she a good person? She looks cute, but is she? And every person she's ever met, talked to, instantly puts in their vote on the screen, up or down. And it's like, and then the bottom, it pops up. Dude, that's the great, what is greater than that? If you could predict everything. Should you buy Apple stock? Put that shit up on consensus. This is going to fuck with the stock market so bad. You watch, blockchain going to destroy the stock market because it's going to show the inefficiencies. So basically, you'll be able to arbitrage this. So you'll be able to sit here on one side and um, go, Apple stock is whatever. Just pick a price, 150 bucks. But it's actually worth 500 bucks. And they have, the stock market hasn't realized it. So you'll be able to buy it for 150 and, and you know it'll basically, high odds, it'll hit 500. And what'll happen is, well, the second that happens, Shit will start moving to the blockchain because there's one thing people like more than being right is being rich. So the stock right now, generally Wall Street and big banks don't like the blockchain because it's attacking their business model. Like, oh, Bank of America wants to charge you $35 per fee, trust uh, per overdraft. Trust me. Bank of America is like, woo! I remember when I was broke, one year I had two, three thousand dollars in $35 transactions because I didn't have enough money and I would go below and you know bounce and they were glad to cover the payment because 35 you know how big bank of america is probably 50 percent of america use it got a i don't know what the number 100 200 million people most people are broke in america paying one or two imagine you had a little business where like 100 million broke people every time it goes like one penny below you get 35 bucks <laughs> 30 cents a good bank look at bank of america's annual report on their revenue but the point being, I can't fault them for that because in a sense, they're extending credit to you, but it's still bullshit. And so of a blockchain, I have to think how a blockchain could solve that. I mean, one way would be money could be lent from inner person. You have intra-banks loans. So if you look at things like commercial paper, those are like companies loan each other money temporarily. And you also have that in intra-bank loans. That's how you come up with a lot of the things like interest rates and stuff. And so basically you could have interpersonal. So like, let's say you were connected to a thousand people who knew you. When your bank account was going to go low, it could have smart contracts or some open system where your buddy who has an extra hundred bucks in his bank account shoots it over to you and you get, and he gets paid some premium, but not 35 bucks. Like when you go $1 under Bank of America, they're extending you $1 credit. Let's say you have $1, not enough money. You know, you bought shoes or something and you only had $100 in your bank account and it was 101 bucks. 
So they extend $1 to you credit, technically, because they don't decline the charge. And they charge you 35 bucks for that. You know what interest rate, if you have to pay 35 bucks on a $1 transaction is a fucking usurious, illegal interest rate. But Bank of America and every bank is, has that ability. There's a law that they are allowed to do that. It's the only person that can charge you on $1, $35 interest. Nobody else, a credit card, if you put $100 on a credit card, they can't charge you $3,500 interest. They'll go to jail, whoever does that. That's literally, there's laws. But banks, because it's hyper-centralized and massive lobby, you know how big the Bank of America lobby is? So my point is, Bank of America and all the banks have not bought into blockchain yet. They will when what I'm talking about happens. When there's a consensus machine that can freaking predict whether the stock price is accurate and allow, tell you to buy it or not buy it, oh, no, it's going to be chaos in the markets in good chaos. If you're on the side I'm talking about, you bought into the blockchain and crypto and you understand what I'm talking about, this damn thing will change the game and pillars will fall. Pillars will fall and they'll be replaced, hopefully, by better pillars. Don't know who those better pillars are. The crypto ICO world... The whole blockchain world is very new. Uh, probably half the companies that exist now, maybe 90% of the ICO new companies, and even non-ICOs. There's, there's crypto blockchain companies that didn't do ICOs. They raised capital traditionally or they bootstrapped it. They'll be gone. But what's left, theoretically, going to solve a lot of Imagine this medicine. Our grandma, 99 years old, fell the other two nights ago. We were just in the hospital for 10 hours. And there was four doctors looking because she, she fell for other reasons, but she also was congested. So they did a chest x-ray and they, the, the doctor told me, it was like, there's four of us looked at the x-ray. Two of us think she just has bronchitis. Two of us think it's the beginning of pneumonia. Now she's 99. You don't want to mess around with your health at 99. So they're like, take these antibiotics. But antibiotics, you don't want to take them if you don't have to. Imagine if 100,000 doctors around the world, instantly that was flashed. And they were paid if they were right. So it's like a bet. So doctors in India, Nepal, Louisiana, Canada, like everywhere, they have some coin. It's called the diagnosis coin. And they have a thousand of them. And they're worth money. They can cash them in for money or buy things. With them. So they go, I'm going to take this coin and I'm going to bet that your mother, grandmother only has bronchitis. She doesn't have pneumonia. Now he has, he's now his perverse incentive is no longer perverse. He wants to make money. And we know humans, one of the hallmarks of capitalism or true capitalism is the invisible hand that moves us when we go for our selfish intentions. We actually can do things if the system is right that benefits society. So let doctors be greedy with that coin. And then what will happen is you'll see, let's say most of them looked at the x-ray, which is up on the blockchain, put their coin up and said, you know what? I think she just had bronchitis. She doesn't need antibiotics. That's a benefit to my nine-year-old grandma. It hurts the antibiotics companies because <laughs> they put antibiotics company ain't gonna tell you the truth. They wanna sell something. Never listen to salespeople completely. I mean, sometimes I'm a sell person. Don't listen to everything I say if you don't trust me. And I don't trust all the pharmaceutical companies. So. The blockchain would solve that diagnosis problem right there. You wouldn't even need 100,000 doctors. After statistical significance, you need decentralized doctors. So all those four doctors that were at UCSD Hospital, who knows? They might be paid by pharmaceutical companies or they might all have groupthink. They're all buddies with each other, so they don't want to disagree with each other. So it's a corrupted, perverse, incentive-based consensus was re reached in that room. Now, maybe it wasn't, maybe it was, but I know that... 10,000 doctors who don't know each other, who don't come from the same background, who are spread out all over the world, would have given a much better diagnosis. My cousin had a stroke not too long ago, one of my cousins, and the doctors for five days couldn't figure out what's wrong with her. One doctor was like, go home, and then one doctor walked by, said, let me see the charts. An unrelated doctor just happened to be walking by, and he's like, you had a very rare kind of stroke in your cerebellum, and you better stay here or you're gonna die. See? That was, it took five doctors to figure it out. 500 doctors would have figured it out in 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Because 5,000, 50,000 doctors plugged into the universal mind, collaborative intelligence, 
would have figured it out in a millisecond or as quickly as you could read the x-ray. You have to get more people involved in your decision making. By the way, if you watch my Twitter, if you watch my Snapchat, I've been involved in this before the damn crypto people were even talking crypto. All these crypto people think they're new to the game. Well, some of you are and a lot of you aren't. So don't get it up in your fucking high horse. Some people are like, Todd, you're a newbie. I'm like, I'm less new than you think. I am new to some stuff. Some shit is new. The fucking auger coin rep is new. Everybody's a newbie to it. It ain't even out yet. EOS isn't out yet. Crypto is full of half awesome people I want to meet and half fucking annoying piece of shit people. Sorry. Those of you in the one half, I would like to meet you. Those of you in the other half, you're like hipsters who discovered some band before everybody else. So you think you claim <laughs> some right. Oh, I knew Coldplay before they were big. Who fucking cares? You think being first to the fucking knowing something makes you a special goddamn person that I should admire? Uh, logic. Why? What is, what is, being first is partly luck. Outside of your circumstances, you happen to read a blog article first on a Ripple. So you're now the Ripple expert. You're not a Ripple expert. You're a Ripple expert if you're a dev for Ripple. If you work at Ripple, if you're co-CEO of Ripple, the rest of us are conjecture time. By the way, the media forgot to mention. Imagine if the damn media. Speaking of Ripple. Speaking of Ripple what? Second biggest coin now. Yeah. But this could be dated, so. What time you listen to this? <laughs> yeah, it went up to 250. But I've been doing these Twitter polls. I've tested this consensus is insane. When I was going to buy a car, I was going to buy one car. I was actually going to buy a McLaren. And I was at the dealership, literally about to make my decision. And there was a Rolls Royce behind me. And I have a big Snapchat. So I was like, take a picture of this one, the McLaren. And then I said, what about this Rolls Royce? I, I always thought Rolls Royce were for old people. I didn't think they were cool cars. Triple the votes. I said, screenshot which one you like. Triple of them of my followers picked the Rolls Royce. I'm like, maybe they know something I don't know. So I was like, can I test drive that? Second I test drive, boy, you test drive a Rolls Royce versus a McLaren. It's like dating a Victoria's Secret model versus, you know, I won't say that's not a good, I don't, don't want to get in trouble for that analogy, but uh, it's not comparable. The consensus on my Snapchat was way smarter than me. The compilation of, I don't know, let's say 50,000 people voted. Not everybody who follows me voted, but tens of thousands of people voted was good. It was right. Then I didn't know which Rolls Royce to buy. I was like, do I buy the purple one? The blah, blah. They told me the white one. I, and it was decentralized. I've been doing this decentralized shit before people were talking about blockchain. Uh, it's crypto. Before crypto. I'm more interested. I like the crypto side, but I like the blockchain. I like the decentralized consensus the most. By a factor of, I think it's more important for humanity by a factor of thousands. Now, they're, they're somewhat inextricably uh, inner, or I should say intertwined because the coin creates the currency which creates the invisible hand of capitalism which if doctors are staking their coins, if they have a stake in it, they're more likely to reach non-corrupted consensus or uh, give their consensus in a non-corrupted way. So there is the coin is important. But the coin's more like peeing as a human. You gotta pee. But you never get excited when you're peeing. You don't go, the great part of my life is I have to pee. It's a necessary function to make the body work. <laughs> it's a weird metaphor. It might go viral, but it's the truth. If you ain't smart enough to understand what I'm saying, rewind this video. It is. It's a function of a bigger organism that's necessary. Breathing is important. But you don't go, you know what brings me the greatest joy in life? I've been breathing all day. I mean, maybe we should, maybe we underestimate breathing, but realistically, you breathe millions of times in your life. You're not gonna have millions of parties over breathing. But breathing is necessary. The coins, the crypto is necessary because it creates a monetary reward and an exchange mechanism between you know, these various blockchain applications and protocols. But it's not the important part. It is the sexy part because it's about money. Well, I'll tell you what. You let me tell the future versus me having money and I'll make my own money with the future. You give me a time machine, my friend, you don't have to give me a penny. Just give me a time machine. I'll be rich myself. Blockchain 
Decentralized consensus is the time machine. You can use it to make money, but you can also use it to stay healthy. You can use it to get better education. You can use it to be happier. You can use it to find better friends and avoid the shit pieces of shit. That's, you can get better media from it. God, I go on some of these news sources. I'm like, has the new media always been this biased? Like, I actually think I can tell now, like, is this dude getting paid? Like, Rotten Tomatoes is an example. My business partner is good friends with the, found, the founder of Rotten Tomatoes. He doesn't own it anymore. Guess who owns Rotten Tomatoes now? Hmm. I think it's Warner Brothers. Oh, yeah, they're going to really give <laughs> very honest consensus. I think it's one of the big MGM or one of the big studios. Like, is that who you want? Let's, let's have our movie ratings owned by a movie company. I'm sure that's good. And sometimes I go on Rotten Tomatoes, and I know I've, I know the devil's advocate that Rotten Tomatoes just amalgamates uh, other critics' reviews. But trust me, you can amalgamate certain people's more than others. Because my friend's like, Rotten Tomatoes doesn't do the review. They take a review of the reviewers. Yeah, but who selects which are the reviewers? That's, the, that's not a smart way to think about it. If I go, only these seven people who always like my movies, I'll amalgamate their reviews, I'll get better reviews. I mean, tell me, just go look at Rotten Tomatoes and go look at the movies you like. Some of them are way off, and some of them are way the other way. The best way to know consensus on movies, the best, only way you could really know, is you'd have to have a decentralized approach where all movies go into movie theaters. No one gets more movie screens. They call them screens, but you go, all right, there's a thousand screens, each of them get 10 movies picked at random, and we, we then, for example, survey people walking out of the movie. Every one of them, every one of them. See, surveys are biased because you don't always get enough people. Sometimes it's statistically significant, but statistical significance, I can tell you from doing a shitload of split tests, spending tens of millions of dollars on this, is hard. Bigger numbers are better. Yes, you can. Have, I've seen split tests say it's statistically significant. They'll do these surveys like, is Donald Trump popular or not? They ask 500 people or 1,000 people. And then, of course, there's other polls. Basically, polls can be manipulated unless you pull a shitload of people. And the blockchain would be even better. You could do something like if every chair or every ticket purchased would be one. But even that could be manipulated by marketing and by better titles. It better probably the blockchain for movies would be when people walk out of the movies to open the door, you'd have to like press one, two, three, four, five stars. Like, or maybe this is something cool. Here's where currency comes in. You get half your money back on the ticket in mm. the form of a ticket coin if you place a vote. So now it's not perverse incentive. You're only motivated to vote, but you don't get any more coin back if you give it a one to five stars. So now, basically, if everybody knew that, you could get half your money. So let's say a ticket say you raise ticket prices to 20 to 30 bucks. But if you vote at the end of the movie, you get $15 instantly back into your account. That'd be a good deal, right? So you just sit there, you watch the movie. As you stand up, you pull out your phone, you go blink. It reminds you as you're walking out of the door, want 15 bucks back instantly on your card in one second, we'll put it back. Put an anonymous, completely anonymous vote, what you think. Dude, that will destroy Rotten Tomatoes, will no longer exist. Unless, of course, Rotten Tomatoes gets with the program and builds this. Facebook, same thing. They hide what article should be shown if they don't like, if they don't like shit. Twitter, all these, man, come on. You think the media is not, and the media is powerful because whatever, humans have something called availability bias. Once you see something, what you see a lot, becomes reality. So they can manipulate it by just posting lots of pictures of this president doing stuff that most people would like or showing. I see that. There's certain darlings of the media that they can do no wrong. If some bullshit comes up, they're going to post it. And there's other people the media likes, uh, hates, and no matter what they do, it'll be <coughs> manipulated into a horrible thing. Media needs to go on the blockchain. But boy, there's going to be a fight for this. We're going to fight for this. Car review. What car to buy? Who knows what's better, a Ford or a Chevy? How are you going to find out? All the surveys are done by like Ford or Consumer Reports, which is doing an old... I went to Consumer Reports. You have to pay money to be a member to see the reviews. That is not the way to do it. Then you only get people... It, it skews the numbers. It's not the way to do it. That's, why, that's where crypto comes in because the crypto could basically 
you would get paid to take an action and review something for consumer reports. Who know, dude, I guarantee you movie critics. You know the average movie, big blockbuster movie spends between 30 and 60 million dollars on marketing. You don't ever think they bribed a movie critic that's powerful? You're gonna spend 30 to 60 million. You don't ever think a movie critic's gotten, here's a million bucks. You could spend a million and only spend 1 60th of your budget and if a couple, you could spend 10 million. You could send them gifts. I don't know if it happens. I'm not making an accusation. I'm just asking you. If you're playing poker in the game of life and after 30 minutes you don't know who the sucker is, you and I are the sucker. Let's not be suckers. If you centralize how people, if you let prisons make profit, is that a perverse incentive? Do you think there'll be more people in prison? you think there'll be incentivized to put people in prison? If you get paid as the owner of a private company to operate a prison per worker, are you going to be lobbying for justice? I think people argue this with me. I'm like, what alternate universe have you grown up in where if you pay people to do stuff not in your best interest, it ends up actually working out for you? Just try that. Try that. Every married guy or woman that I know that had a lot of money, guess what happened at the end? Guess what happened when they got divorced? You think they went, you know what? You had a lot of money before me. Keep it. No. They go, give me the fucking money. Perverse incentives. The laws are set up that way. Blockchain could eliminate that. All the people who have ever touched the couple could be like, did the wife or did this husband contribute to the money? Based on the votes, you distribute the damn money in a fair way. Okay, you, just, you were 50-50 contribution to this income and wealth that was created? 50-50 in the divorce. Oh, you had nothing to do with it? You get 1%. That's called justice, man. You did 100% of it? And I'm not talking about men versus women. I'm talking, it's not gender specific. Do what's fair. Fair is all we're asking. I think you could evaluate employees this way. Who here has ever worked at a company where one person ain't doing their weight and the rest of the team has to do all the work for them? On the, but people don't want to say something because they don't want to be a tattletale. Snit, stitches get snitches. Snitches get stitches. Instead, you put that shit on the blockchain, anonymous. Everybody touching that company, whether it's an employee, employer, a manager, a customer who touches that person votes, this person sucks. And then they're out automatically. You could have smart contracts to fire people. Like there's no human decision. Maybe there's some cons of doing it that way, but imagine no human decision. So like good people just get raises. They don't have to wait on their boss. It's like, you're doing awesome. You just got to raise every day. Why not? Give good people a raise every day. Oh, you suck and you do nothing? You get half your money. Imagine if there was no salary. It was just according to what you do. People who contribute make more. Who wants to work at Starbucks where everybody makes the same? You're serving coffee, but you're doing a good job. The person next to you sucks, but they're dating the manager. So the manager ain't going to fire them. How often do you think that happens in jobs? 80% of the time people play favorites? 100? Imagine if it's smart contracts or proof of stake model where you don't, doesn't matter if this person likes this person because of how they look, how they act, whether they kiss ass. The system, the blockchain moves you in and out. Dude, this is going to be major. It may not happen for 100 years. It may happen in the next five. I hope not 100. That would suck. I want to see it. I want to see this happen. But we're talking about justice for injustice. We're talking about the right people get put in prison and the wrong people go free. We're talking about school systems where people are learning what's going to help them in life and no one central power decides what you learn in school. What if the curriculum, the teachers were the greatest? What if you had learned history from the most fascinating history teachers? What if the most fascinating math teacher in the world, no matter where you live in the world, was your teacher? What if you learned basketball from LeBron James and Michael Jordan? We have technology now. We're not Luddites. We have technology. It's possible. Anyway, I sh did he say he's ready for the call? Okay. I got to go. I hope this was some value to you. For those of you who want to learn the crypto side, I got a little crypto program that I built with my mentors. People mentoring me, I'll share with you. It's a paid program. Um, you go to tylopez.com. Put a link if you're watching the video. 
put a link below or a little pop up. Um, might be up here too, depending on where you are, where you're watching this. It's a paid program, so this is me being a salesman now. Da -da -da. Beware of perverse incentives. But honestly, it's a good program because it's literally people training me and I just record it. Why do I charge money? I don't know why does Subway charge for a sandwich because they put time and energy into it. I do a lot of shit free. I just was an hour and 30 minutes free or whatever it was. So those of you who want a two month mentorship by the people mentoring me, you need a little more. You want your handheld to be learning this stuff or you're more advanced and you want to learn more advanced stuff. Tylopez.com slash Bitcoin podcast. If you're listening, if you're watching, click the button. It'll take you directly there. Ben, good talk, even though you were sick and couldn't talk much. Couldn't talk much. I was ben. listening. <laughs> I was listening. All right. That's why my voice wasn't as deep as it usually is, just in case you guys were wondering. There you go, Ben. And also, look on <laughs> iTunes and Spotify. I have this free podcast. Subscribe. Leave an honest review. Did this suck? Am I a moron? Then leave me a one star. If this was interesting, leave a better star. I'd leave a good review. Me good. personally, I would. But you're related to me, so you're biased. <laughs> Adrian, you're not related to me. What are you giving it? One to five stars. Five. This, this is one of my favorite ones. Oh, he's just saying that. <laughs> Adrian <laughs> is, is going. Uh, I, I like, I like to, uh, Everybody, leave together. what he's saying. <laughs> Do what he's saying. This is a more uh, futuristic talk. Yeah, it's cool. So what I was saying is five stars. Five stars. He's asking me on camera. He's like, you, I will get that raise, right, Ty? <laughs> yeah, he's like <laughs> motioning <laughs> off camera. <laughs> yeah. Mark's got a gun on him. Where is Mark? 